Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Lord Strathclyde, who quit the Cabinet today after serving 15 years as the Tories' leader in the House of Lords. Well, Lord Strathclyde, today was the midterm review. It's supposed to be about the kind of harmony of the coalition, the energy of the coalition, yet you don't want to be part of it anymore. <laughs> what kind of vote of confidence is that? Well, as you uh, explained, I have been uh, leader of the Conservative Party in the House of Lords for nearly 15 years, and I've been on the front bench continuously for a quarter of a century, 25 years, uh, which is a, a record uh, at any time that I can uh, think of in the uh, last 120 years. So, and yet so today, and years my own announcement, government. and today's uh, announcement by the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister are, are completely unconnected. Actually, I've very much enjoyed working as part of the coalition in the House of Lords. Uh, being part of the first coalition for 70 years has been an extraordinary experience. Well, have you enjoyed all those government defeats, 50 defeats since 2010? I mean, how would you describe your relationship with Lib Dem, Lib Dem peers in the Lords? In, individually, it's, it's, it's extremely good. Individually, um, co but collectively? collectively I, I do think that um, uh, Liberal t Democrats increasingly are going to be faced with a, a, a choice and to, and to make a decision about how they believe they are going to be judged at the next general election. I think that all members of the government, whether Conservative or Liberal Democrat, will be judged by the people on the record of this government, are not how people have voted in individual uh, divisions over the course of the five years of this, uh, of, of this Parliament. And, and while it's true that in the House of Lords we do occasionally uh, have uh, government defeats, and very often these have been caused by Liberal Democrats voting the other way, I think the, the generality is that the government's programme has been de delivered and delivered very effectively. But you're blaming the Lib Dems peers there for the defeats, inevitably. I mean, is it true that you've said to colleagues that the coalition has broken down in the Lords? No, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that at times of uh, irritation over the course of the last 18 months, I might well have said that. But in fact, the, the coalition is remarkably stable. And we saw today, between uh, David Cameron, between Nick Clegg, a very strong personal uh, chemistry and a real desire to make this coalition continue and to work successfully uh, right until the next general election. And that's the important message that, came, for me, came out of today. These are people who understand the needs of the British people, who understand the programme that needs to be put before the British people at the next general election and want to deliver on it. Well, next week, Lib Dem peers are again going to make life very difficult for the coalition because they're going to vote with the Labour Party in the Lords on shrinking the size of the House of Commons. Mm. How did you feel when you heard that they'd be doing that? Well, I was very disappointed because this was part of the original agreement that we had uh, struck soon after the general election. Uh, it was we a all betrayal, wasn't yeah, it? We all, we all agreed. Well, it's not a word I'm, I'm going to use, but uh, people will make their own uh, uh, views on that. But what is true is that Conservatives stand for reducing the size of the House of Commons from 650 to 600. The Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats do not. I very much regret that decision. It's an opportunity to reduce the cost of politics as well as reducing the size of the House of Commons and, and making politics a little bit slimmer. Well, as part of that legislation that's going to be voted on next week, uh, it also includes boundary changes. How difficult do you think the Lib Dems, by blocking that legislation, how difficult are they making it for you, the Tories, to win a majority at the next election? I think that we, we will fight the general election on whatever boundaries that we have got. Yeah, but how and difficult I, is it if you don't get these I, new I boundaries? I don't think it is going to be hugely more difficult, but what, what, there is a, what is genuinely recognised is that there is an unfairness built into the current system of parliamentary seat distribution, which makes it more difficult for the Conservative Party to have a majority. Now, obviously, the Labour Party have grabbed onto that opportunistically. I'm very sorry that Liberal Democrats seem to be making the same decision. I think they've taken the view that the best way they can keep their seats is to fight on the old boundaries. I'm not sure that's true. Let me just ask you finally, um, David Cameron says he likes coalitions. Do you? I, I think all, all of us uh, at, at some stage would much rather be in a single party government. But you know, this was an experiment in 2010. Some of it's been a bit messy. A lot of it's been difficult. But largely, it has produced what we wanted it to do. Tremendous public sector reforms, tremendous economic reforms, and that will be the hallmark and what we will be judged on at the next general election. But when you see David Cameron and Nick Clegg sort of laughing along together today, can you bring yourself to laugh along with Nick Clegg? Oh, very much so. I, I get on Not well with, uh, with, with, uh, with Nick Clegg. I don't get on with, with, with all of his uh, colleagues wherever I find them. But essentially, it is a good relationship, and it's a good relationship because we understand the needs of the country and we're going to deliver on it. Lord Strathclyde, thanks very much for joining me.